But we're going to consider all of this. We're, we're, we're creating a sales profession and we're becoming sales professionals. So with that being said, we're going to jump into our material and don't forget, we need you. Okay. I'm going to share my entire screen. I'm going to share and then I'm going to scroll on over to my presentation. So any of, any of you who are watching this, because I had to shift over into my presentation mode, um, I may or may not be able to see your comments. So unmute yourself and speak up if you want to um, talk about anything, okay? So um, here we go. I'm going to scroll over to my presentation. Are y'all seeing this? I need to make sure, I like everybody do a quick, yep, if you're seeing my presentation. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. And Crystal, will you do me a favor and monitor the Facebook form? Yes, I can do that. I'm going to take that as a yes. Okay, cool. All right, so the very first slide that you guys are seeing right here is um, is what we call Point Far. This is a borrowed thing from Bold, which is a uh, division of Maps Coaching. It is a stolen idea that I think is most pertinent thing in the world because when we get into the sales role, we are actually stepping into a mindset adjustment. And so if our programming has been a salesperson is very salesy, We've got to be able to break that mold. We've got to change the way we look at things and then the things that we look at change because sales professional is actually a really, really great role to be in. It's actually a decision maker. They help, they're advocates. And so your programming leads to your thinking, leads to your feelings, leads to your actions that lead to your results. So if in my brain, everything in sales is translated into a kind of a negative connotation for sales, then I am thinking that I am in that position, maybe subconsciously going to be in that role of, Ugh, I don't want to sound like a salesy person. So then I start feeling like a salesy person. And then my actions lead to me avoiding doing the right thing because we think we're going to feel salesy. And then in the action of not doing anything, we don't get any results. And then we feel like we're not doing anything. And then I feel like I'm terrible at this job. I'm a terrible salesperson. And then that has been reinforced into my programming now. And I believe that I'm terrible at this. I think that I'm terrible at this. I feel like I'm terrible at this. I start acting like I'm terrible at this. And then my actions really lead to results. And the results are I'm terrible at this. And so that just reinforced the programming. And so it's created this crazy cycle that we have to be able to break. We have to believe that what we're doing is actually incredibly significant in this world as a sales professional. And that I am good at this. And that because I am good at this, I can do better things. And because I can do better things, I start thinking that I'm better at the things. And then those thoughts lead to my feelings and I feel like I am better at those things. Those feelings drive me to results and my results begin, I mean the actions, my actions are proof that I am better. The results are proof that I'm better. And that reinforces us back into our thinking process. The programming starts all the way over. And so for me, when I'm looking at what you are doing right now, jumping into a sales Role. And for some of you, you may have been doing this for a long time. You need to think this way, that everything that I do needs to be leading to a result that will reinforce my programming and that I can begin to rewire my brain and that every conversation I have does not need to sound like a dirty salesman. It can actually sound like advocacy at its highest to get people to create their own future by making the best decision for them and their family. This is what sales is really all about. Today, we're going to talk about one skill set specifically that has to do with the language basics. Okay. So we're going to do language basics today. Before we get into that, last week we talked about our disc personality profiles. And just a real quick recap of that. Our D's, high D people, their biggest fear is being taken advantage of. And I want you to think about that as we get into today's language basics. Our high I's, their biggest fear is rejection. Our high C's, or sorry, our high S's, their fear is loss or security or trust. And our high C's is a fear of being wrong or criticized. And so when we jump into language basics here today, the very first thing we're going to start off with is going to be embedded commands. So embedded commands are simply words or phrases enclosed 
or embedded within a larger context. It's a series of words that stand alone and make a command. They operate below a person's level of awareness. And so when I think about embedded commands, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Sentences that are structured in a way that get us to create a feeling within ourselves or an action within ourselves. And so if I were talking to you about something, I might use an embedded command of, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, um, I want you to be able to feel good about making this purchase. I want you to I want you to feel good about this. I want, we're putting this little embedded command that like, it's, hey, we're going to make this purchase. I want you to feel good about making this purchase. And so what I've done is subconsciously put into their brain, you need to feel good. The feel good is attached to this purchase. So now everything is starting to draw a line or a trail into me using language that causes action. The reduce your price. What are you gonna do to reduce your price? It's not dancing around things. Buy now, do it today. Get excited. Man, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I want you to get excited. We're going to go view homes today. Like I am getting you excited. I'm not asking you, are you excited for then you to be able to come up with the idea. I'm actually giving it as a command, but it's a subtle way in which now they feel it because you've inspired it without you really making them or forcing them. It's actually just drawing it outside of themselves. But a lot of times we want to ask, like, do you feel good about doing this today? It's like, well, no, I don't feel good about writing this contract. Or, hey, feel good about writing this contract. You see, because it changes the way everything is perceived. You're giving them the opportunity to make the choice that is actually already in their world. They're already weighing in their world. I'm either going to feel good about this or not feel good about this. Almost everything is a flip of the coin. It's a heads or a tails. You're just putting emphasis on the heads. Feel good about writing this contract. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we're going to reduce your price. Not, do you want to reduce your price? No, the answer is no. Hey, we're going to reduce your price. Like it's an embedded command. That one's a little bit more direct, but the idea behind all of this, as you can tell, is that it is very specific phrasing that we use to make sure we're moving towards the direction that we want this process to move towards. Now, here's the biggest thing that I always want to make sure that we're having a conversation about. I always want to make sure that we are truly talking about things in a little bit different of, um, I guess, recognition of the fact that you can be manipulative as a salesperson. And so I want to stop right now and have that quick conversation. If you are truly looking at yourself within advocacy, within a fiduciary responsibility as a real estate agent, these are ways in which we can get around a lot of the objections, get around a lot of the challenges, but this is by no means your end all be all ability to manipulate situations. If you use these tricks as the ability to manipulate conversations, I'm telling you, you're doing the wrong thing and you're not being an advocate or a fiduciary. But if you know somebody is nervous or on the fence, it's okay if I know all of the things that they need, this house fits. I know all the things in their world, this house fits. We've even talked extensively about everything that, about this being perfect. I've already given them the opportunity to say yes or no. I've already given them all of the space for them to make the best decision for them. Sometimes I though am in control of removing roadblocks. And so I can speak specifically to them that doesn't recreate doubt, right? A lot of times in, in the reason why embedded commands really work well is because in our world, we will all the time be creating doubt out of the our, out of our fears. Okay, so we'll be creating doubt out of our fears. If I'm a high I and my fear is rejection, I'm going to start having some doubts. And if you create a new doubt in my mind that there's an opportunity for rejection, I'm going to latch back onto that. We're going to do another lap around this space, right? So when you ask a question that creates the opportunity for doubt. I am naturally out of my fear going to respond to the doubt side of it. I'm actually going to move into that space. Do you want to move forward? Well, I don't know. Or, hey, let's feel good about moving forward in this process. Oh, okay. I still may have the re reality that I have to ask questions. I still may need to dig in and understand a little bit more about why you want me to do this. And yet what I'm not going back to is a starting point to do their lap. Okay, I'm not going back to the starting point to do another lap. 
Does this make sense? I'm gonna agree, I'm gonna guess that everybody's shaking their head yes and feeling good about it. It's a little bit different doing these classes on the Zoom side of things, but or the Google Meet side of things. But I appreciate you guys being patient and joining us to take your businesses seriously. Okay, so that's the idea behind embedded commands. Okay, and again, I'm always gonna come back to this space of like um, we have to be purposeful. Here we go. We have to be purposeful about doing it the right way and doing things the right way. We cannot be manipulative in this business. And so when I look at embedded commands, here's a couple of sentences. When would you like to meet to list your home? Does 4 p.m. this afternoon work or is 5 p.m. better? The reason why that conversation is a better conversation or that question is a better question then, when would you like to meet? Does 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. work better? See, what I did is I've inspired the result that I want. Embedded commands are about inspiring the result that I want. Would you like to meet to list your home? Like my goal to go into any meeting is to list somebody's home. Now I'm not going to force them to list their home, but I want to embed the idea that when we're done with this, I'm going to list your home. It's the same way in which you control all the situations. You don't have to be controlling to be in control. The second example here says we have, uh, we haven't had much interest in your home since it's been listed. Don't you think we should reduce the price now so that you can move by spring? So reduce the price round. It is an embedded command of like the desire that you want. Because usually what we would do is feel a little bit more, um, I guess we would take an easier step and say something more along the lines of, don't you think, uh, or you would probably just say, hey, what do you think about reducing your home? Or, or wh what do you feel? How do you feel? You usually use a feeling word and feelings create actions. And so if we've given them the opportunity to feel differently, we're giving them the opportunity to choose a different action and that action may not include us. And so you just want to make sure you're, you're, you're putting up enough barriers so that then they can have recognition of what they really want out of this and still be able to make the best decision for them and their family. I know this sounds a little bit like, you know, those little voodoo moments, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to sail spin you, but it's really not. This is us giving them the opportunity to come to clarity. Okay. I'm going to give you an example, right? We all use this example all the time. Anybody who ever teaches in sales uses this example. Hold on one second. I see some, some curiosities. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Can y'all see me? Uh, like I've been switching back and forth. Is it okay? We're seeing the presentation and Randy, are we good there? I needed to pause just because I was looking at some of the conversations that were happening. I'm going to agree that we're good. I'm going to feel like you feel we're good and I'm just going to keep moving forward. So when I look at going to, let's say, Target, and I know for a fact, I want to buy pants. I need some pants. You don't know if I'm wearing pants right now because of the video, but let's pretend like I needed to go buy pants. And I go into Target and I need to buy pants and the person up front says, hey, can I help you? And you say, no, I'm just looking. I just lied to you. I 100% in my life need pants. And yet I just lied to you about the fact that I needed pants, even though I know for a fact you're the person who can help me buy pants. Okay. So when we look at the way we use our language, it's not about manipulation. It can be manipulative, which is why I'm telling you to not. You've got to be an advocate. If you're truly about advocacy, you won't use it in a manipulative way. And yet I've got to use it in a way that gets you into a different mindset because you immediately walk in and say, no, I do not need pants and you lie about needing pants, and then you go searching for pants, and then by the time you're done, you ended up buying pants. So I know that you needed pants. In our world, we know that they need a solution for their real estate needs. They need a solution for their real estate needs, and we are supposed to be advocates for that. And so when I have a conversation with you about moving you forward in the process, and I've done my due diligence to understand your needs analysis, what I'm really doing is removing the barriers that are going to keep you in a thought process spin cycle. That's going to keep you out of the remorse and more in line or in tune with what your needs were as you express them. Now we do need to recognize if those needs change, we got to be able to change with those needs, but we do have to make sure that we're helping them make the best decision for them and their family. Utilizing embedded commands helps us to move the process forward. If they are nervous, Hey, feel good about what we're about to do here. It's going to be awesome. That's, that's an okay to tell them to feel good. 
hey, let's do the right thing. It's okay to tell them, hey, we're going to do the right thing. It's okay to really give commands in a way. Now, don't command them to like, hey, sign this contract. But you can say, yeah, it's going to be awesome when we get a chance to sit at the kitchen table, sign a contract, and have the home of your dreams be able to be a reality. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's a really simple, subtle way in which I can have a conversation with them. And yet in that space, I've said to them, sign this contract. So they understand that that is the next step in the process. So I hope in all this makes sense to you guys. And if you have any questions, write them down. We're going to have some time at the end of this. This one's going to go a little bit shorter than the most of them. So then we can have discussions because there's a lot of questions that barrel up inside of us when we're talking about sales. Sales is a weird deal to talk about. I get it. And yet we got to talk about it because you have so much opportunity with every single person that's around you. And you don't have to sound like a weird salesperson. You can actually only all the time sound like an advocate in everything that you say. If you truly care. Now, if you're truly just being a shady, salesy person, it's going to be obvious and people are going to automatically kick you to the curb. So use this for being an advocate and building advocacy. Okay. So let me see about moving into my presentation. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about is tie downs. Tie downs. What is a tie down? A tie down, it, it allows you to take a temperature of your prospect. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to show me where your stance is um, and why are tie downs. Tie downs are effective in the sales process to gain an agreement. So uh, what they do is they allow us to take temperature and it allows us the why is that it gives us the opportunity to be able to get into an agreement. So these are our tie down and examples of tie downs. Isn't that what you want? Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you want to be able to get to X, Y, and Z, and you want to sell by this, and you want all of these things, list all the things that I've done through your needs analysis. And so what we need to do then is get your house on the market so we can get the most amount of money for it as fast as we possibly can. Isn't that what you want? They can't say no to that, right? They can't say no to their own goals, and it gives us the opportunity to tie down. And if they give in, they give you the, they're, they're giving you an idea of like where they're at. They're, they're giving you their temperature. If I get to that point, I tie you down to the, isn't that what you want? You're immediately either going to say, yeah, you know what, Randy, it is. Or you're immediately going to go, Randy, it is. And I still haven't heard you answer questions one, two, and three. So now I've isolated why they wouldn't pick me. And now I can dig into what I want them to do. See, most of us go into these moments of assuming and we never actually close. A tie down lets us get into the space of testing a close. So then we can see where we're at because they more than likely will toss you an objection if you haven't given them enough clarity to know where you can go next. I've had a few agents um, actually lately who have come back to me and in the times right now of understanding how everybody's feeling, how these buyers and sellers are feeling, they're coming back to me and having conversations with me going, I didn't know what to say next. And part of the reason why we didn't know what to say next is because we didn't know the next question to ask. And a tie down question helps us to understand where are you at? What, what is the litmus test in your world to come immediately with tunnel vision and say, Randy, we got to take our house to the market right now. All right. No, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I understand. Like, it sounds like you're nervous about what the industry is doing right now. Yeah, I 100 percent am. And it sounds like you may be in a protective mode for your family. Yes, absolutely. And it sounds like fill in the blank with another empathetic statement. We didn't talk about that, but I did earlier. So any of you who are on my call. Awesome. So I know when you and I talked last, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that our goal was to make sure that you could get your kids into the school system they really need to be in. And so if that is still our goal, what would it look like to take your house off the market and not be able to get this, get that, get start listing leads analysis, because that is what you want, isn't it? Yes. And see, here's, here's where it comes. If there's a true objection or something that's challenging that they've been harboring, they can't say no to their own goal. So they're going to say yes. And now they're going to give you the opportunity in the moment to know the real reason. And we just actually found out that they're going to start cutting jobs at our house. I mean, at our, at our business. And so right now, yes, that was our goal, but we may end up being jobless here in the next couple of days. Well, see, now you hear and you understand exactly what it is. Now you had the litmus test of what's happening versus what most of us will do. This is 100% what most of us will do. There is some sort of objection or something that comes in and we immediately start spinning data to make people try and change. We try to change people. I'm going to change you. It's not going to happen. 
but the way we use our language can get to the most needed aspect, the biggest objection, the reason why things are changing. And the way we use our language, we can keep them moving in the direction we want them to, and we can understand and gauge where they're at. So embedded commands help us to move things forward. When we get into the idea of these tie downs, it helps us, it's like a practice close. So then we can see where, where the temperature is. Are we ready to move forward? And if we're not, it gives me the opportunity to do another circle and understand how I can make sure they're connecting value with me. Again, if we are advocates, then we're bringing values. Sales is about advocacy. So then if we are bringing advocacy, we're bringing value. And if we're bringing value, we just haven't connected the dots. And if they're not ready and they give us a reason why not, we can come back through and start connecting dots again. It's a cycle, right? The sales is always going to be a cycle. So I hope this is making sense. If you have questions, we're almost through the material and then we can come back to some of the questions that you guys have. So keep writing them down. And so if you go through these tie downs and examples of, uh, wouldn't you in it? Couldn't we, can we see how that works? Don't you think, aren't we, isn't that right? Can't you? Okay. Right. Isn't that true? All questions that are helping us to get, again, a measurement for where we're at. Okay, so here's a couple of things with the tie down statements and embedded commands. The beautiful thing is we can mix all of this together. Okay, so we're going to look at this. We're going to see our tie down statements and our embedded commands. So this first one is a uh, the statement. So let's move your appointment up by a week. You do want to protect your equity, right? So I've embedded the command. You like let's move so i'm moving appointment i want to show you you want to protect your equity right that moment is i'm giving you the ability to say yes to the fact that we're going to do both of these things we're going to move our appointment out because you want to tie it because because you want to protect your equity so when we ask the right questions that can end in a yes right when i get to the space where i am going to create a moment for you to say yes and I have an embedded command, you're saying yes to the whole sentence. Now, what you're saying yes to is essentially the question, you do want to protect your equity, right? Absolutely, I want to. But when I started with the let's move your appointment up by a week, now I'm tagging it in. This is the only way and the only reason is because I want to do that to protect your equity. So now I'm creating a system to which for you to protect your equity, we need to move your appointment up by a week. And if you are a, truly an advocate, that sentence is true. Because if I wait another week, I'm not protecting your equity because now you've got more bills, you've got a mortgage that's come through, you've got HOA, you've got prorated rent, property, all that stuff. And so it's just us utilizing our language and our knowledge to help people understand the connections. Moving your appointment up by a week is 100% what you want if you want to protect your equity. So I'm tying an if then to it. Okay. I know that some of this stuff is getting a little bit more um, advanced in our conversations, but if you really want to practice this and practice it well and have great conversations, this is the way in which you take embedded commands and tie downs and create um, sentences and conversations that move you in the direction towards a yes. You always want to be moving in the direction towards a yes. Okay. And so this next one, you don't want to end up chasing the market, do you? You don't, <clears throat> you do want the most money possible, right? The strategies I've presented you creates the undeniable results my team gets. Can you see that? And so what they're doing, if they say yes, they're actually agreeing to the whole sentence. And in the whole sentence, hopefully has been your embedded command that helps them understand how they're going to be moving forward in this position. So tie down statements, embedded commands. Again, um, after you sign the contract, I will immediately go back to my office and begin to look for a buyer for your home. Fair enough. It's like, yeah. And so what I've said yes to is again, the signing the contract. And it is also true. Once you sign the contract, it is true that I can start the work on that. But I've asked you to move forward in this process and you've agreed to a yes. Once you reduce the, your price, we'll open up the market to a new set of buyers, increasing the likelihood of an offer. That's the goal, correct? Again, what we're doing is with that embedded command in there, we're mixing the ability to hear a yes. And if they're truly not ready, this is what I you know, keep alluding to. If they're truly not ready, they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you. And now you've isolated where your objections are. If they say, no way ever that I want to ever do this without knowing X, Y, and Z. It's like, awesome. Well, I didn't realize, and that's my fault for not getting that to you. So let's talk about X, Y, and Z. 
and now I do the cycle over. And then once they understand that, embedded command, tie down, now I have a new gauge for where they're at. And hopefully if I've connected the dots for a value, now they know 100% certainty that they can move forward with me and they're signing the contract or they're putting their listing on. Or even better yet, they've realized they can't do what they thought they could do and you were an advocate for them that helped them to realize that. Sometimes we're going to meet with somebody and our sales position, our professionalism in sales, utilizing embedded commands and these tie downs is going to create the perfect storm for them to understand now is not the perfect time. It is better for us to be advocates to get them to make the right decision to not do something than it is for us to make them feel as if they can make a, a decision that, that doesn't help them in their process. Because we would agree that some of our buyers and sellers, some of our clients, we've gotten together with them and we could have used all the skills in the world to get them to a yes. But we realize if we're advocates for them, that this is not the right thing for them and not the right timing. But we can't tell them that. You never need to be in the space of giving somebody your opinion. But what we can do is direct them in the right direction to self-discover the best things for them. And if we've done the proper needs analysis, if we listen to where they're coming from, we truly can create a space that they now are able to make a decision that says yes or no. And at the end of the day, they're tying that all into you as their advocate. Now you've become their, uh, now they've become a raving fan of you because you did the right thing for them. Sales is about advocacy. And I'm going to keep saying that. I want you to feel that sales is about advocacy. And the reason why we want to be able to speak and communicate properly is it because when I have an advocate, they understand things at a deeper level than me and can help my thought process stay on train because I will be derailed in any which direction if I'm not truly focused and understanding of everything. And my fear will overcome and I will create doubt and I will start leaving in that doubt state. Okay. So again, we just got to be able to get them into a space that we can get them beyond the doubt, beyond their fears and to really understand their needs and to be able to help them go in the direction of their needs. So I hope this is making sense. We are almost done here. We're going to go into this next space here, which is going to be talking about closing. Um, very, almost all the time for us, when we go into closing, uh, we don't, we don't close. We just, we go, most of us are assuming, most of us are assumptive closing. And I'll tell you how I know this. I talk to you all the time, one, but number two, this is the best case scenario when i look at anybody who um is in like a buyer's role or they're working with a buyer and a buyer happens to be a friend they will go into that space and i'll say hey did you get a buyer's representation agreement and their answer is like no but they're gonna buy with me anyways well here's the reality if they were going to buy with you anyways they will also sign the buyer's rep agreement with you anyways and so really it's just our own, our own fears now getting in the way of asking for what we want. And at the end of the day, a close is simple, simply a call to action. And I think you need to have everything move into a closing. And so I close every single scenario, every single appointment that I end, it ends in a contract or another appointment on the spot. If I'm walking around and seeing houses with you and we see five houses and we don't want to hit, pick any of those houses, <clears throat> and I go through all the reasons why and we make sure that we're understanding and we've done our needs analysis properly. I'm ending that appointment by saying, Hey, all right. So on Thursday, I've got you booked to be able to go see houses from two to five. It's like, well, we don't have any houses to see. Well, that's okay. Because if we don't have houses right now, we're going to have our homework to find the houses that we're going to go look at. I want to keep the process moving forward. So I'm going to close to another appointment. Sometimes we may not have the appointment scenario set yet. So we may have done, um, gosh, our first agreement, our first whatever. We may be cultivating a relationship. Sometimes there's next steps that require a personal follow-up. So that's the ne next steps that require a personal follow-up. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I know that like we're not going to be going to look at homes yet. We just talked about some of the things that you need. One of the things that I'm going to do is send you a... Uh, gateway so you can start looking and previewing homes through photos and what I'll do is I'll call you in two days so that we can have a conversation about what these homes look like I've closed you I've let you know in two days I'm going to call you hey guys in the next 24 hours what I'm gonna do is send you a text message so that I can make sure you have all the information and then I want you to message me back so that we have uh, that we know that we're on the same page 
what I've, I've closed you into an action step. And so now here's the thing. Once that action step is complete, I've got to close you into an action step. And the other way in which you can always close, if you're fearful of close and you've got to start practicing close, always have some sort of homework to do. Always have or do homework. So I should end every an appointment with something that I have to do, because if it's something that I have to give you, and then I talk to you about that, your expectations are then now I have created another space for us to connect. Closing is about creating another space for us to connect. So for that moment, now I said, hey, I'm going to look up these numbers for you and I'll get them to you on Tuesday and I'll call you on Wednesday. Hey, I'm going to email you tomorrow and I'll give you a call uh, on Wednesday so that we can have a conversation about it. Hey, I'm going to do this so that I can do that and we're going to connect. Hey, I'm going to do this so you can do that and we're going to connect. And so if you need to understand closing, closing is simply a call to action. And so now we can get beyond the fear of closing and we can start practicing closing. If it's truly a call to action, that makes things a ton simpler, so, a ton more simple, simpler. I think that's grammatically correct. I don't know. But it helps make everything easier. How about that one? And so everything that we do in our world really is about creating all of these moments in which we can have conversations that help people to move forward towards what they really want. And it's about sales in the space of sales is advocacy. And so if you understand their needs, it is about using language to help them understand how to move forward. And in that process of moving forward, you're going to find out where they can really weigh in, what the temperature of their uh, current situation is. And at that point, when you understand that, now you have a better understanding about should they move forward with a yes or should they move forward with a no? And you can be an advocate for a yes or you can be an advocate for a no. But now you've become an advocate creating a raving fan. And then again, at the very end of all of this is that we've got to be able to know how to close. We've got to be able to close. And closing is simply a call to action. How can I make sure that you're moving the next step forward? Because if I leave it into this assumptive role, it won't happen. If I leave it into a space of curiosity, it won't happen. If I'm not really doing anything to create action, I have stalled the momentum. And everything that we want in this space, in an advocacy sales space, is to be able to keep momentum moving forward. So those are the key elements that I wanted to walk through. I know that this is um, in the slideshow. Some of y'all may have screen captured if you didn't. What I'll do is Crystal's going to take a shot of everybody who's on this call. And what I'll do is make sure that you guys get at least those couple of slides so you can look into that information. Now, I will tell you, if you are a Keller Williams agent, these, these things for language basics is really um, borrowed from um, uh, Language of Sales, which is a, a coaching program that you can go and be a part of. It's a paid for program. Um, this is the only thing in this whole sales course that I borrow from um, KW. And it just it makes sense because it's something that they've done. They've already put it together. I just want to be able to share it out a little bit. So it's not all of the conversation. It's not all of the classes, but it's the basics that we really could utilize today in conversation. So embedded commands and tie downs. It's a big deal. So, all right. So what I really would like to do here at this point is just kind of open it up. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to come back into this little conversation. And let me see. I actually want to change the way I'm looking at everything. So, yeah. So. Curious, any questions, concerns, comments, any of that good stuff, the floor is open, guys. This is our moment to be able to ask the questions that we have or to make the comments. I know Peter's dying to say something. Maria, <laughs> on Facebook comment, um, it sounds like you don't want to share your home for three months because some sick person may come in here and give it to your family, question mark. Oh, hold on one second. Let me look. I got to, let me read that. Where was it at? It is oh, is that in Yes, it's in the form okay. of your career life. Okay, read it again real fast for me, Crystal. Okay, it's uh, Maria wrote, it sounds like you don't want to show your home for three months because some sick person may come in here and give it to your family. Yeah, so I, I would be careful with that kind of phrasing because what you've done is like you've told them all the reasons why not to. But an empathetic statement to somebody who has fear says it, it, it sounds like you may have, you, you have fear. Um, let me collect my thoughts. Um, so, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you don't want to show your home because you're afraid that somebody might come in that would disrupt your family. Is this correct? Yeah, yeah, it is. And because of everything that's swirling around here, 
you think fill in the blank, right? You think that it could truly bring the sickness into your home. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Now, when we were having the conversations about selling your home, what I found out was you needed to get to X, Y, and Z. So this is needs analysis. So I know what you need. Now I'm speaking directly towards your needs. And if I end that with a tie down of saying that is what you want, correct? They're going to say yes, right? They can't say no to their own goals. They're going to say yes. And yet at that moment of saying yes, I guarantee you their fear is going to be overcome and they're going to say yes. And I don't want to bring this into my home. I don't want to do it. They're going to fill in with that fear again. And then you've got to be able to have that moment of saying, so what would make you comfortable so that we can sell your home, get you where you need to go and protect your family? They may have ideas and they may not. But whatever comes of that question, you better be able to respond. And so in this space, I talked about another class, our ability to bring creativity into our world. This is your perfect moment to go, okay, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, if I was able to find a way in which people could tour your home without them ever stepping in your door, would, would you still keep your house on the market? Yeah, I, I would. Okay. So if I could find a way to be able to find you, a, if I could get you an offer today, sight on scene, that would get your home sold, would that be worth it to you? Yeah, I absolutely would. Would you be willing to sacrifice anything for that? Oh, well, I don't know. What do you mean? Well, we could go out right now and find an iBuyer buyer who would write you an offer for your home immediately. And we could get this thing done. Is that what you want to do? It's like, well, I, I, right. So it's our ability to start finding some creativity because their fear is legitimate. They need to protect their family. We have to have healthy, safe people. And yet their goal is still needed. They, they do still need to sell their home. Their kids still need to get where they want to go. They're still out of room. They still need the space. Everything is still real. We have to find a way in which we can create advocacy for them and create a space that helps them get what they want. And so, yeah, they may want to get their home off the market and that's fine. The way you could get your home off the market is to sell it. But if you sell it right now, I could find you a buyer today. Would it be worth a reduced price to be able to get your home sold without anybody looking at it? And that's either a yes or no question. And if you ask enough of those questions and their fear is too strong, then you've got to be the advocate for what's best for them and their family. And it's okay if they pick, hey, we need a delay right now. But you owe it to them and you owe it to yourself to ask enough questions to keep them in a forward moving process. You will know when it's too much. You will 100% know when it's too much. Hopefully, Maria, I don't know if that answered your question, but like I would really go in that. It's, what you were doing was creating empathetic statements, which is great. But what you really need to be able to do is to move an embedded command, move towards the embedded command conversation, which is um, leave your house on the market, get your home sold, you know, move, to, move by March, move by April, whatever it is. You got to get into the embedded command and then come back with that tie down that's going to help you get to a yes. Okay. What else guys? Anything else? I don't, I know some people have already dropped out. You're welcome to unmute yourself if you have a curious question or anything or a comment. I know that it's a lot to sit and listen to a talking head. Chris, I know you stepped away. I want to make sure. Um, is there any other comments or anything in the Facebook? I am looking right now. Sorry. Um, right, no, you're fine. It's not a problem. We're all balancing life. So glad you're enjoying this. Uh, okay. No, Jeffrey Todd. Nope. Nope. There's no more comments. I'm just reading out loud for no reason. <laughs> uh, it's like uh, what Ron Burgundy. He'll read everything that's on the teleprompter. <laughs> okay. Well, look, guys, I, I, I know that it's a weird space to be able to just sit here and listen to a talking head. I know that I'm fairly charismatic and you can take everything that I say as truth because I say it with such certainty and loud enough. Um, but do the homework, dig into this yourself, understand how you can have the conversations, practice the conversations. Now more than ever, you need to have script practice and role play partners. You need to be practicing this stuff. This doesn't just happen overnight. It flows off the tongue pretty easily when you can practice it. And it sounds like you're a stuttering jukebox if you don't. So find some, people to role play with. There's people obviously in this chat right now who are interested in this topic. 
and well enough that they would be more than happy to, I guarantee you, role play with you. So I think, Crystal, were you laughing at my jukebox analogy? It was a terrible analogy. Not even sure it made sense. I think you but cut out. I think that was your life, man. Peter, you have something to say. Oh, I, no. I said, I, I think you were cutting out when you said something about being a dramatic or something. Dramatic? You say dramatic oh, or dramatic? dramatic. Oh. Randy's charismatic. Yeah. Did you say good looking and charismatic? Good looking, charismatic, handsome, funny. Um, yeah. You, you got me. <laughs> no, but, well, is, I, I will say, can I say one? Uh, you may. You, you're going to anyway. So uh, the that. question that was posed on the Facebook. Yeah. That Crystal, I think, uh, read about the uh, objection. Yeah. Of the okay because of the coronavirus. Um, I was just reading some stuff that other brokers are doing across the country and they were you know not avoiding it uh i'm not saying that you're avoiding the question but um you know helping out like not you know not opening having open houses and and uh just addressing the question with the prospect like hey we can put hand sanitizers in we can have people take their shoes off we can not have an open house. I'm just reading some of these things. And I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking as a prospect in, in their shoes, you know, that's that's something that's going to help me. And then move on to your statements. Yeah. So so I'm going to I'm going to tell you. In as nice as I can. Yeah, no, because as soon as you start creating solutions before you know what the real issue is you're speaking mm -hmm. to and chasing down something that is irrelevant i don't want to put my house because i'm scared of the coronavirus all right well we can put hand sanitizer in it well no because i don't want it what they really there's something deeper than that and if it's can get into this the the our innate needs and so if i don't really care about the coronavirus what i care about is safety for my family and in the idea of safety for my family i've also talked to you about like whatever my needs were, my needs analysis were, I've got to get here by this and I need this, like for some of us, and I'll use an example for a gal who um, had cold feet all the time. Her child had a learning disability that they were removing the program for this child to have this solution in their school. She had to find a home immediately, but there's so much fear in the move. Like she's her personality and I got it. She was a high S, trust was a big factor. If she said, I, I just can't, I just can't sell my home right now. Well, her fear is safety, which is, which is great. Her fear in this space. I'm like, so now I'm projecting an analogy, right? So would have been safety. And yet if I would have gone, Hey, well, let's talk about hand sanitizer and let's talk about booties and let's talk about no open houses. And let's talk, if I started talking about all that, I was actually skirting the fact that what she's feeling right now is fear. And so what I've got to be able to do is isolate her back to where her needs were because she's now taking that emotional brain and putting it in the right lane so if we get into the right lane now these are your needs this is what you want right yes and yet i'm so afraid of something happening to my home awesome so if we we're able to find some solutions for this would that be worth now keeping your home on the market yes now is like what you said now here's the log roll of all the things that we could do but if you start with the log roll first I've started answering questions that now once I find the ability to bring a solution, I just sound like a talking head rotating around the same issue, doing laps around something that I sound desperate with commission breath. But if I okay. go from where your needs analysis are and then we go into solution mode, now I've got your brain in the right space because if I start going into solution mode, you still have the fear. I haven't fixed the fear yet, but I've given you options to be able to hand sanitize. I'm going to be like hand sanitize doesn't help my fear. So I've got to address the fear first so that I can get into the space for solution mode. And in the same way, sometimes it's not going to be fear. Sometimes it's going to be a myriad of other things, but we've got to get in, them into the space of having the conversation or having the brain move into what are my needs so that I can understand meeting my needs in this process. And for some of us though, you're going to run into the challenges where we can't fix it and we shouldn't fix it. 
And we should just then in that space be an advocate to help them say, okay, we're going to have to delay the process and I get it and I'm here for you. So you are right. The order is going to be different though is what I would say. Right. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think that's a great, great observation for sure. All right. Anybody else? I just saw somebody jump in. I know that we're here at the end of it. Um, uh, Judy and Alan Wagner. Hi, welcome. And we're about to be finished. I'm going to post this somewhere else though. We, we just finished through, um, but I'll post it somewhere so you guys can connect to it. Um, Judy and, and, and Alan, Crystal, who's on this call, is uh, she's my executive assistant. So um, if you message her or put in a comment like an email, I'll make sure she gets you the link of this recording. I recorded this whole conversation so y'all can have it if that would be okay. Um, so, Wait for right. there. if not, I'm good to move on, man. We can for sure keep going. Okay. I will be doing tomorrow starts my, um, so I'm shifting now into some more of the um, training sections of the business more so than specifically about the chaos of what we're dealing with. Um, the last, so yesterday I started with um, kind of how to set up your home, like how to work from home, the psychology of working from home, which is a big deal. I'll find a way to repeat that possibly. Um, I would talk about the tools that you could use to start making sure you can create new creative spaces for your people who are looking to buy or sell. Um, and then this morning I talked about easing the climate, what you can do to start easing the climate of the chaos. Um, and then, so now we're moving into more of the how to's of real estate. Um, and so this is just my ability to put the training that I give to my people out there in the world. Um, today, this is about sales tomorrow at, what was it? 11, one and three. I'm actually teaching mission vision. values. I usually teach a three hour workshop. I'm breaking it into one hour segments. And so I'm giving an hour gap in between of those so that those of us who have businesses to run can still do some running the business in those gaps in those hours. Um, but I'll post everything everywhere so that people can know how to connect to it. You can share this with anybody. I'm doing it online for a reason so that we can just give back from that, which we've been blessedly uh, given. Like there's an abundance of this moment to give back. And so I just want to keep doing that. So guys, I, thank you. I, I love that you're serious about your business. I love that you're plugging in. Um, and then tomorrow we are going to start uh, digging into mission, vision, values. Friday is profit and loss. I hope that I break the internet with the people showing up to understand profit and loss. Models for, our, for building your business, models for um, honoring and building your profitability and making sure that we can start doing the things now to weather the storm. Um, it's here. It's on our doorstep. So I want to make sure that everybody in this room gets the life that they desire, the life by design. Okay. So if this is all... Um, I'll go ahead and sign off and say y'all are absolutely amazing.